All right. I want to say thank you to Charles Barrett for that presentation um, discussing soil moisture sensor use um, in vegetables. I think it's a very great presentation. Did a, a very good job of, of explaining kind of the, the research side and how to really use that. And so right now we're open to questions. And so at this point, I want, to, I want to remind you to please type your questions into the question box and press send. You know, make sure you do that. Um, also, as a reminder, if you're requesting pesticide credits um, from the presentation, don't forget to sign in and out of the presentation. Go to, at, to do that, go to the audience chat box, type your first name, your last name, and then the states that you're um, requesting credit from. So, you know, make sure you do that and then you sign out at the end. I see some of you putting your names in perfect and just make sure you do that. Get them in there so they get logged. And at this point, um, we're opening the floor to questions. So we'll um, we'll sit here for just a minute and see if anyone has any. Y'all make sure, I, I will put this one more plug out for anybody that's listening. If you're there, if you got any questions, the, uh, Charles is the expert on doing this work in, um, in vegetables. So make sure you take advantage of his knowledge while you got him here live. very kind of you to say Wes hey I'm only a row crop guy you know that <laughs> I pretend, pretend to know vegetables vegetables just fancy water <laughs> said we'll give it a few more minutes maybe we'll get a question or two give you one more reminder make sure you get your questions in make sure you sign in and out of that audience chat box with your oh not yet do not see it um we have a question coming in i don't know if it hadn't came through the chat box or not charles do you happen to see it on your end i do not see it on my end either yeah, i don't know why it came in because you put it in the chat on. box could you put it in the chat box for us We'll just try that then since it didn't come through. I saw the chat box work for you. And we'll give you, we'll, we'll wait for that to come in. There it is. I'll let you repeat that, Charles, since you can see it, and go ahead and um, and answer that. It says, do you have growers that run irrigation automatically tied to sensors? So that's a good question. Um, I don't have any growers that do that. I've done some work uh, with very basic sensors, rainbird, um, turf grass sensors. Basically, the way it works is you set a threshold on the sensor that anything above this moisture content level, um, we don't want to irrigate. And so it's a basic, uh, I think of it like a light switch on and off. Um, so it breaks the circuit for the, for the solenoid valve to turn the irrigation on. If, if the threshold is met or exceeded. So if it's too wet, it won't irrigate. And that basically just accounts for, for rain. Um, but that's, that's as far as I've seen with sensors and automation and irrigation. Right now, most of the sensor use is you put a soil moisture sensor out there, you'll take a look at the graph and you decide whether or not you wanna turn the irrigation on and, and it's not automated yet. Um, I'm more of a fan of of not having it automated. I think you tend to water less 
um, when, when you're not automated. Um, but that's just my preference. So Charles, we actually have a second question that, that, that it didn't come through, but we have it in, um, in the chat box there and I'll repeat it while I'm talking. So it says, thanks for the presentation. How would the soil moisture sensor graph look in soils where seepage irrigation is the common practice? Um, you know, kind of sandy and mucky style soils. So I know stuff we don't see much, but you probably have a little bit of experience yeah. with it. I have a lot of experience with it. I, that's where I grew up. Uh, <laughs> I did uh, some of my early research over in Hastings. Uh, where everything is seepage irrigated, and I have experience with sensors down in South Florida where it's seep irrigated as well. And so the way it looks is the the bottom lines on the graph, like say we have five lines on our graph, the bottom two or three lines are going to be flat for the most part because they're installed into the water table um, more than likely. And so once once the soil is saturated, uh, it's not going to get any wetter, and so those lines stay flat and they look wet. Um, but then you'll see fluctuation. You'll see the same normal stuff that we see. I say normal in quotes um, that we see in well-drained soils. You'll see that on the top two to three sensors. So it just shortens the depth of the soil profile that you're able to see much activity, but you can still get a lot of use out of it in seepage um, but, you know, I think of seepage irrigation as a big boat, so it's slow to turn. And so um, I think where it's most helpful is in the wintertime when we're getting cold fronts or if we can see like a big tropical storm coming and we can anticipate these weather systems that are going to bring a lot of rain. On a seepage system, we can start lowering the water levels in the field, taking out boards or however you manage your water. Over in Hastings, we, they used to pull boards out of the ditches and let the water level come down um, and in anticipation of heavy rainfall so that we can maximize that soil storage. Um, that's kind of how I see it being used down there. We can also see when crops are starting to mature and they'll turn off those bottom roots and come back up. We can see that even in seepage situations. Um, there's a lot that you can gain even in a seepage um, system with soil moisture sensors. And I'll stop there before I really start to ramble. No, I think that's good, Charles. I think that's good. Really good answers to them. Do we have uh, any other questions? Like I said, this is your opportunity. If um, if you don't get them in right now, first, I appreciate you, those of you who've asked the questions today. If you don't get them in right now, um, keep in mind that this will be available to you until April the 30th. So you can go and watch Charles's presentation all the way up to April 30th. You can also watch um, or go interact with the virtual trade show all the way up until April 30th. So you got plenty of time to do that with. Um, make sure you you know, you know take full advantage of it. You pay the conference registration fees and all that. Um, feel free to reach out to either one of us for any of the questions that you may have. Um, we're gonna give it another minute or two. If you got anything to put in the chat box or, or anything to put in the questions down there, Make sure you send it in, and we'll um, we'll get it answered. And I'll just offer, um, you know, I, I think I put my email address in there. If you have any questions and you want to ask me a question uh, on the side or something that you think about later, shoot me an email. I'll get back to you um, with any information that I have and try to help out. All right, we'll give you another minute or so to ask any questions. Um, if not, I think we're going to close it down for today. Um, so, again, I want to thank Charles for that excellent presentation, the excellent answers to those questions. And um, like I said, one more, one more chance. The last reminder I'll give you for your uh, pesticide credits, see a lot of you have done that, make sure that you um, sign in, put your name, the state you're requesting, and then sign out of that chat box at the end. So. Don't stay signed in. Make sure you sign out, and uh, that'll get your appropriate credits to you. So um, at this point, um, if we don't have any more questions, I appreciate you all attending today. I think we're going to close the session down. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Wes. I appreciate that.